Clear Skies Campers. In this video, I want to show you how to get data for the image and record it in the spreadsheet so that we can graph a light curve. So I'm picking up from where we were in the first video in which we determined the, uh, the number of counts that this star has in this image. And so now that we've seen this star, we need to find another star to compare this to. And we'll call that a comparison star. Shocker. Now, what is a comparison star going to look like? Well, we're going to pick a star in this picture that is not the ZPEG, and we're going to measure its counts. And we want to pick a star that we can be familiar with uh, throughout that time because, as you note, we're going to record some information about this star in a spreadsheet. What's that spreadsheet look like? Well, let's see, our photometry window was right here. So let's just go ahead and record this star. This had a count of 100,241. So we're going to open this spreadsheet and we're going to put that number for variable counts 100,241 goes right there. We're using, in this case, the V filter. And we want to record the million Julian dates number. Where on earth do you get that? Okay, well, this is why that big, ridiculously long file name comes in very handy. I'm going to bring Macaulay back up. And you'll notice that it's been shortened here in the aperture photometry window. The first part of the file name is VZPEG, that's the star. V, the filter. And then you have this big long number, 2458801. D, 73401887900. Okay, this is that million Julian date number. And that D stands for decimal place. So we're going to type in 245880, 245880, decimal place. So we hit the period. And we'll bring that back up. Uh, 7340188. 7340888. Okay, and we press enter, and you'll notice that it rounds that number. And now we want to put in a comparison star and check counts. Where does that come from? Okay, this is what we're going to pick for our second stars. So looking at this image for VZPEG, I might choose, oh, how about this star down here? I have this nice triangle pattern that just happens to be in the sky kind of near VZPEG. So I'm going to pick this bottom star. I might even scroll in just a little bit, zoom in so that I get right to the center of this. And I click, and it measures 309,000, ooh, 3,000,000. 3095901. We're going to type that number in. 3090501. And we press enter. So that is the second star in this image that we have measured. We're calling that one the comparison star. We need one more star. I'm going to pick this one over here. And that one gives me 9905. 295-295-905. 30, I think is the number. We'll go back. 2959150. And again, it helps to do the check this a couple times. 2959150. 2959150. Fixed. Okay. We're going to ignore this background counts column for now. Don't worry about that. One thing that I should make clear, if this is your central star VZPEG, and this is your comparison star, and then this one is your count star, 
or check counts, then you're going to go in this order on each of the images you're analyzing. VZPEG, comparison, check. So that, you know, if you went VZPEG and then check and then comparison, oh, that's going to probably screw up which one of those columns you put this in. So I would do this one first, second, and third each time that I do this for the images. Now, there is a way that we can fill in another part of this. And if you just happen to use my comparison stars, oops, uh, that I've been using, you should be able to put in what here is known as the comparison star reference and the check star reference. So the known magnitude for that star is something that we have to get. I wish I had time to show you this in class, how this really worked well. This is a software called Aladdin. Notice Aladdin just has one D. You can download that. I've actually opened the image VZPEG in this software by doing file, load local file, and then I opened something called Simbad, uh, which has given me a layer over this image. And if I hide Simbad, I'll just do a quick hide. You'll see that this looks just like the image that you've been seeing. If I show that, you'll notice that there's these little squares over each of the stars. So I'm going to click right here. This is one of the stars in that triangle that we used. And you'll notice it gives me information about this star. I'm going to scroll on over and oh no, I chose a comparison star that it doesn't appear that we have a magnitude of that we can put into this box. Oops. Let's make sure that that was really the one that we were doing. Nope, that one wasn't. This was the one, HD222601. Uh, so I'm going to scroll over. Aha! Here's a visible magnitude of 8.53 that this database has for us. So I'm going to type that into the spreadsheet. Known magnitude 8.53. And this gives the spreadsheet a scale to do the calculations. We'll do this for now our check star. So I'll go back to Aladdin. And my check star was this star here, which has the wonderful name HD222623. And as I scroll over in the visible, I get 8.55 for it as well. So I will put 8.55. 8.55 in for that. Okay, and what that does is it provides a scale so that the computer knows how many counts equals what magnitude. And so you see that this is now giving me um, some absolute magnitude kinds of stuff. And this is actually going to start plotting points on my variable light curve as I scroll over in the spreadsheet. So the mission now is to fill in as many data points, uh, variable star, comparison, and check for as many of the files as your group can accomplish. Okay, that's it for this video. Thank you.